You know, the more I think about it, the more likely it is that Ray's a Palpatine makes a lot more sense. She lures an enemy of her grandfather into a false sense of security, gets him killed, steals the ship she desires the most. Next, she goes off to another enemy of her grandfather, becomes a Force deity, and gets him killed. Then, she goes on to return to the site of her grandfather's demise and kills the final bit of the Lee Trio in a sense of bloodlust and rage against the Lee Trio's grandson and nephew. So yeah, it all makes sense. Terrible idea, but not bad in execution. Oh wait, this is about the hero's journey. Okay, I have a lot to say about this movie. Not so much in the terms of the hero's journey, unfortunately. And most of this has to do with the finality of this movie. Like The Last Jedi, we are going to only be talking about the hero's journey here. And it's not a bad one in terms of this movie alone, though. Honestly, Rey's hero's journey gets more and more complete with every passing movie. We give her a mundane and triangle flair, her call to adventure when Finn and Poe return from the news of Palpatine, and a little editor's note, I legitimately forgot what Poe's name was. <laughs> and her first threshold is, I guess, the sand chase? Honestly, this one feels a little too late into like, Act 2 to actually be the first threshold. Despite this scene taking place about 20 minutes into the movie, it still feels like a little too late in my opinion. The first threshold shouldn't be about already in the midst of the adventure, but rather just before it, such as Luke with his dead aunt and uncle. There he got a taste of what would be become the greater known. So for this, her greater known is just battling stormtroopers, something she's been doing since Maz Kanata's bar. And I understand that technically speaking, her great unknown is delving into the force, but at the same time, she's been delving into the Force two movies already. Yes, the same argument could be made about Luke, but with Luke, he became a fully realized Jedi by this point, because he had four plus years of experience. Rey is still just struggling so much to even fathom what is going on. It just is tediously annoying. It should have been a small challenge early on for Rey to face down, or at the very least, something else for us to chew on. Otherwise, this whole sequence just feels rushed. Trials and tribulations always fine as is, we just run to a similar issue The Force Awakens. The Abyss. I would argue that Rey's Abyss in this movie is the reveal she's a Palpatine, but that's like, what, halfway through the movie? I mean, it has emotional distress, it weighs heavily on her, but at the same time, it's just too much of a gap between each section. I would then wager that it's the duel between Rey and Kylo. It is the climax of this relationship, and the death of Kylo Ren. And after this duel, Rey does run away and go into hiding and faces her lowest moment. Now I guess you could wager the Abyss begins at the reveal and ends later on, but it feels as if this section was a little too large for its own good. What I mean by this is while the Abyss is clearly the longest section of this movie, in the grand scheme of a three-act structure that this trilogy sets out to become, this shouldn't have happened here. This should have been Rey's greatest moment and her greatest triumph against her greatest foe. That's not a thing here. What we get is just another lightsaber duel between these two, and quite frankly, it's just not that engaging. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's easily the best fight of the trilogy, but in terms of the Abyss, it's also rather odd and unstationable. It just feels off, and it feels rushed, and it feels something that was just hastened to. Now then, the Enlightenment. It works... Kinda. I have no idea why they are using Yoda's theme for when Luke lifts the X-Wing. But Rey does learn and understands the Force. Wait, 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 wait. Why is she amazed by seeing an X-Wing fly? Bitch! You can fucking fly on your own and lift rocks like it ain't no thing. Whatever, whatever, whatever. Uh, hey, future super here. I also completely forgot about the fact that, you know, Rey's whole I am all the Jedi and all the Jedi talk to her through the Force. I 100% completely forgot about that sequence till about maybe three days after this section was already finished. Uh... Yeah, I have nothing here. I just genuinely forgot that's technically her enlightenment of becoming a fully realized Jedi. Heck, even back in the last Jedi video when I claimed, you know, Rey becomes a full-fledged Jedi during the duel in the Death Star, I actually forgot about this sequence. I have nothing for that. I just genuinely completely forgot. But overall, my point still stands. It kind of works, 
it has all the information there, and it's, you know, it was, it was there, it was built up in Act 1. But because of the fact how this was the first movie to actually introduce that concept, along with Palpatine's sudden return, and there was no buildup of this, it feels like it's very lacking. And overall, it feels like it's pulled out of left field for the sole reason of having a power moment. So in other words, this enlightenment doesn't really work that well when you really think about it. So, Rey's return as a full-blown Jedi is here, blah blah blah, for all credits, here we go. At least they tried to make her have an arc here, debating between light and the dark. Honestly, it's not a bad idea. I mean, it's overdone with the Skywalker family, but hey, at least they tried. <sighs> it's not a bad hero's journey. It is a bad movie. It is a god-awful, trash, deserves to burn the fires of hell movie. And the overall hero's journey isn't that good either. Let me explain. In the original trilogy, Luke's growth was seen across all three movies, and clearly meant to be one massive hero's journey. The first threshold would have been the destruction of the Death Star, Empire Strikes Back would have encompassed all the trials and tribulations in the quest steps, and the Abyss, whereas Return of the Jedi would have encompassed his enlightenment and the return to his more mundane world, of that being a Jedi. Rey is a bit more odd. I mean, it certainly is there, it is complete, I think? But how often the journey is botched up in these movies, it feels lacking. Here's the problem with all this, I can't explain why. Throughout all my time criticizing movies, working on writing, and otherwise working in film production, this is the first time I just cannot say why I feel this way about this hero's journey. Looking at the hero's journey of Foray, it looks well maintained in structure. Mundane is her scavenger life, her call to adventures meeting Han Solo and learning about the Jedi. First threshold goes to Starkiller Base, Trials is training, Abyss is either finding her place in the universe or the reveal of being a Palpatine, then Enlightenment and her return to becoming a Jedi. But maybe there is a reason, and it's nothing to do with the analytical side of all this. I love this franchise. I wanted this trilogy to be good, and it just wasn't good at all. Despite this aspect of the story structure feeling alright across the three movies, it just... I just felt disappointed. Not in the cast, but in the writers, directors, producers, and everything in between. I just really have nothing else to say. Rise of Skywalker certainly tried to give Rey a lot of development, but everything else is just not there. And you shouldn't save your character development for the final few hours of a character's existence in a film franchise. That's not what you do. You build it up throughout the entire time. She doesn't do anything. Not until this movie and... In the words of the great Jeremy Johns. I guess that's the hardest part is I just, I felt nothing in the movie. I was watching it and I'm like, it feels like a sci-fi movie. And that is where we end it here. This has honestly been the biggest project I have worked on since the school year has wrapped up, and it really does mean a lot. I would love to hear all your thoughts about these down in the comments. I really hope I was able to convey my points clearly to all of you. If not, let me know, and I would love to have a conversation. But honestly, a movie like this, it deserves so much better writing and planning. For me to go into this video with my usual improvements, god, that would take forever. I think like The Last Shadow, I have to have an entire section just dedicated to that bit alone. Hell, might as well just make a whole entire video on it. And heck, while we're at it, might as well rework the entire trilogy. Oh, wait a second.